Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about body fat analysis using skinfold caliper testing. How accurate are skinfold calipers for measuring someone's body fat? In short, they are not accurate at all. However, this doesn't mean that skinfold calipers should be made redundant. It just means you have to understand the flaws with the methodology um, to understand the concept better. So this is the second video in this series. The first one discussed the differences between two, three, and four compartment models. Skinfold caliper testing is a two compartment model. It identifies fat and fat-free mass, and that is it. Anything that's not fat is fat-free mass. Bone, organs, water, hair, etc. So any two compartment model is flawed. Straight off the bat, this is the first flaw. Any two compartment model is flawed. So. Body fat analysis with skin fold caliper testing. If I were your practitioner, there would be certain sites that I would measure to then put into a calculation, which you then put into another calculation to then predict someone's body fat. So, for example, Dernan and Wormsley have a calculator that measures four sites. Jackson Pollock have a calculator which measures four sites. Perillo has a calculator which measures nine sites. Sloan has a calculator which measures two sites. Now, to break one of these down further, one typical foresight protocol would be bicep, tricep, suprailiac, and then subscapula below the shoulder blade. So with this one specifically, just as an example, there's nothing on the legs, which means that you can understand the differences and the discrepancies between two individuals. So male to female, there would be differences in terms of body fat distribution. Even males and males, um, there are some men that have um, greater body fat storage on the legs. Some men tend to have quite lean legs and store a lot of fat on the stomach. So each one of these, you can see the flaws with the protocol being used. Now, the other thing is that depending on which one of these you use, it will give you a different body fat percentage. So you could use the Perillo measurement and then use the Sloan measurement, the Jackson Pollock measurement, the Dernan and Wormsley measurement, and they will all give you slightly different um, body fat percentages. Now, obviously this is a massive problem because they can't be accurate. If you've got four protocols that will give you four different readings, there's no way they can be accurate. So, once you've used one of these, you then plug in through a calculator to go from body density, which is what these measure, to body fat percentage. So calculators have to be used on the right people. For example, um, body density will differ between gender, age and race. So calculators would be say a Siri calculator, um, the Brozek calculator, there's an autism calculator for African American um, females. There is the Wagner calculator for African American males. So with each of these, you have to make sure you're using the right calculator on the right person. So it isn't as simple as just measuring someone's skin folds and then trying to work out what their body fat percentage is. You have to get the right calculator for the right population. So these calculators will depend on age, for example, one looks at males between a certain age bracket. So if you're below or above that age, it wouldn't apply to you. Some of them, for example, if you looked, um, there's a lot of them that look at, say, Sri Lankan or Indian populations, which, again, you wouldn't extrapolate and put into white people. Some are done in children, which you wouldn't use in adults. So there are a lot of calculators out there depending on who you're measuring. So in terms of accuracy... Here, here are two kind of really good examples of why these are flawed. So, in one study which looked at skin fold thickness on cadaver analysis or carcass analysis, which I discussed in the first video, it identified that you could have the exact same skin fold reading, but the difference in fat percentage within that reading would differ. So, for example, if I measured 10 millimeters of a skin fold thickness, the thickness of the skin itself and the actual amount of subcutaneous fat within that thickness would differ between individuals. So this again is another massive flaw with skin fold caliper testing. Now 
there was a four compartment analysis which studied our gold standard, the four compartment analysis, the one on the right. Four compartment analysis using multi method compared to the Dernan and Wormsley and the Jackson Pollock um, skin fold sites. Now, Jackson Pollock underestimated white women's body fat by 6.6%. Now, you can understand that this is huge. You're almost 7% off someone's body fat. So I would measure you at 26, and you would actually be 33, or almost 33. So, again, in terms of actual accuracy, it's, it's kind of like blindfolding a monkey and throwing something at a dartboard. Now, this does not mean that skin fold testing itself should be made redundant. So here are my kind of take home points, should you want to use it. So, skin fold calipers make a difference. I have an expensive pair of Harpenden calipers and I have a very cheap pair of AccuMeasure calipers. Both of these will give different readings. Um, AccuMeasure calipers, because you are squeezing it yourself rather than having a spring loaded mechanism, you can squeeze slightly harder and make almost everything zero millimeters. I, I kid you not, I've measured my umbilicus and if you squeeze it slightly too hard, you can actually take it to zero. So some calipers are poor, I just wouldn't use at all. Whereas some calipers are much, much better. So calipers make a difference. Um, the practitioner makes a difference. Um, I, I, know this, I know this firsthand. If you get a personal trainer to measure someone's body fat, and then you got them to measure it five minutes later, I guarantee you that they would get different readings both times if they're new to body fat analysis. The angle that you hold the calipers, um, the width of the skin fold that you're um, squeezing, the location on the body, for example on the suprailiac, if you're going straight down from the armpit, all of these must have a certain protocol. If people don't know the protocols very well, their own um, individual measurements will vary massively. So if you've got an unskilled practitioner, they can measure you five minutes apart and they would give you two different body fat readings. So you have to make sure you're using a practitioner who's very, very highly skilled, who does a lot of body fat analysis. Because that way at least you know that the practitioner is as good as you can get. So the calipers themselves, you need to make sure you're always using the same pair and ideally using a decent quality pair. They will have a spring to apply pressure rather than manual pressure. Um, the practitioner itself, obviously if the practitioner is not good at measuring, it, you, you may as well just pick a number off the top of your head because it will vary from minute to minute. Um, the So here, here's my kind of piece of advice. I measure body fat with every fat loss or muscle building client that I've got. Um, I can measure people week in, week out, and get consistent readings to plot progress. If I had done this when I was new to body fat analysis, it would fluctuate massively, and the whole idea would be redundant. But if you're skilled with them, you will be able to see trends. So what I suggest is that you ignore the body fat percentage that these are giving you, because if you're using one protocol site, if you're using one calculator rather than using the right calculator on the right person, um, already the chances of that being right are, are slim to none. So you need to get the skin fold sites and use the raw data and to me the raw data only. So if I measure someone that says they're 10% body fat, I don't care what the actual body fat is because I know that that 10% needs to be taken with a massive, massive pinch of salt. However, if you have the sum of all their skin fold measurements and you record it like that, when you measure them next, you can then plot progress. So if I'm measuring you and your skin fold sites go, are going down, you know that you are losing subcutaneous fat. The actual percentage of body fat, i.e. 10% to 8%, I would almost completely ignore because the chances of these being very accurate are slim. They are accurate to a point, but in say just the research that I cited, if they can be off by 7%, you've got to bear in mind that that's for most people that could be, let's say three months dieting. If they've lost 7% body fat as an example, 
and then you measure it again, it could discount that whole margin of error. So it, it could falsely um, promote or undermine your progress within that margin of error. So don't use the body fat percentages that you're supplied. Instead, use the raw data, record site-specific measurements. So for all of my clients, instead of saying they are 10% body fat and then measuring it two weeks or a month later, um, I will have everything recorded so I can see their bicep, tricep, suprailiac, umbilicus, etc., and make sure those specifically are going down. So um, please feel free to ask questions with this. I've tried to cram as much into a short video as possible, but there's a lot more research um, out there which could be discussed. Um, if you've got any questions, please post them on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training, or my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.